from Memorial Stadium in Minneapolis on TV Sports presents college football action as the Michigan Wolverines take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Michigan football 1980 is brought to you by Bush Beer. Remember, don't just reach for a beer, head for the mountain. Hello again, everyone. Larry Adderley along with Jim Bramstetter for this Michigan football telecast. And Jim, most folks remember what happened the last time a Michigan team came to Minneapolis. The last time a Michigan team came up here, Larry, the Michigan team was shut out. And that is the last time a Michigan team has been shut out. And the Golden Gophers today on homecoming feel that they can pull the upset again. And they've got the people necessary to do that. They are the underdog, but Minnesota's strength is Michigan's weakness. Absolutely. Michigan has had trouble stopping the run, especially between the tackles. Minnesota has people that can go between the tackles. One of them is Marion Barber, number 41. Barber is the career-leading rusher in Minnesota football history. Now, that covers some pretty good football players. And he came into the senior season as the career-leading rusher, so every time he gets his hands on the ball and gets a yard, he breaks his own record. He is outstanding. And believe it or not, the fullback, number 9, Gary White, is smaller than the tailback, Marion Barber, and yet Gary White is probably the more explosive of the two between the tackles. He has broken one already this year for 78 yards. Michigan has got to stop these two guys. Gary White last year had a rushing performance of 230 yards, the best in the Big Ten all year long. Anxious to see how this one turns out. And they're ready for the opening kickoff right now. Michigan won the toss, and they will receive. Teeing up the ball for Minnesota, Jim Gallery, number 21, deep for Michigan. Anthony Carter, Stanley Edwards in their usual positions. Carter hiding, hoping to get his hands on the football as we start this homecoming game for Minnesota. Gallery's kick into the end zone. Carter says no. It'll be first and ten, Michigan at the 20-yard line. Thirty-seven degrees in Minneapolis. Wind from the west, nine miles an hour. As you can tell, it's a cloudy sky. There was snow this morning. Large snowflakes. It reminded me of somebody throwing snowballs from up above the press box. Michigan's offensive line, the receivers, that's Mitchell and Carter. And in the backfield, Wangler, Edwards, and Wolfolk. And that's where Michigan is a little thin this week without the services of Lawrence Ricks. Wolfolk on first down. Ridden down and thrown back by Rick Wittes, number four. Gain of a couple on the play. Second and eight, it's called. Craig Dunaway takes a play into the Michigan huddle. As you look at the defensive set for Minnesota, August Capo, Wood, Kellen, and Shue, Von Horst and Howard, the linebackers, and only a couple seniors, Foxworth and Noel in that backfield. There are six sophomores in the Minnesota defensive setup. Second and eight, Michigan. Langler, the quarterback, Edwards, and Wolfolk, and it's Wolfolk again. Right side, first down before Butch Wolfolk is knocked out of bounds by Ken Foxworth. Play originally designed, I think, Larry, to go inside in the tackles. Butch broke it outside and got a very good block on the corner from Stanley Edwards, number 32. The question uh, all was... All week long, we've been talking about blocks by the fullback. There you see Edwards blocking on number 34. That's uh, Sislevich. And uh, Butch gets the good uh, block outside and gets it in there for good yardage. First and 10, Michigan. Ball at their own 36-yard line. Again, Wolfolk, and again the right side. But this time, there is no running room as Fred Orgas and Sislevich close the gap on it. If we see any kind of a pattern develop on all the plays that Michigan has run, they have been on the right hash, and they have run into the sideline or the short side of the field. Maybe they feel Minnesota is overshifting to the wide side cut down on the Wolverine speed. The question earlier was whether or not they could cut on this field as we saw the snow cover it almost and uh, it's a slow field to begin with might be even slower and slippery. Second and nine as Wolfolk gained a yard. And Wolfolk got a bit of a draw but nothing develops on this one as the Gophers close in and knock him down at the line of scrimmage maybe a little bit of a gain. Didn't fool anybody on that one. Third down and looks like eight yards for Michigan.
everyone would think pass in a situation like this and Anthony Carter comes out to the bottom of your screen the Look way Langler is looking Minnesota defensively has about 10 or 11 men up now they drop a couple back that's got Wangler confused and he's checking off at the line of scrimmage no doubt to throw got his tight end complete and finally knocked out of bounds on the far side Norm Bett Foxworth was the leading tackler for Minnesota but Norm Bett makes the catch and Michigan makes a first down give credit to the offensive line they have great protection Wangler stands back there has all kinds of time Betts comes underneath and runs all the way across the field to the sideline the offensive line actually caused that pass to be complete Betts had the time to run that pattern to its uh, entirety first and ten at the 49 kicks to Wolfo no running room at all he is wrapped up by Dana Noel there were others in the vicinity but Dana Noel from Wheaton Illinois one of the two seniors in the Minnesota defensive backfield stops Wolfolk. No we, gain on the play. We see a little bit of the problem Michigan has had on this field in the past. It is tough to go outside and break it upfield. That's one of the problems they've had. It is a slow field and it's difficult to cut on. But this is a good drive starting at the 20-yard line, consuming some time, and they are making the first downs on third down just when they have to. Wangler to throw. Underthrown. Carter has it. And he's pleading his case, but it looked like it bounced before it got to his hands. As we talked earlier, the fact that Wangler had such great protection to throw the pass to Betts earlier, this time the protection broke down. And Wangler was forced to throw it early. And really, John took a heck of a shot when he delivered the ball. This is what caused it to be incomplete. He didn't have time to really get it out there. Gets it out as far as he can with the hit. And I think we see the ball did drop on the ground before Anthony got a hold of it. Third and 11 for Michigan if they're going to keep this drive going. Wangler to Carter. He's at the 40 yard line and that should be good for the first down. Got just 12 yards on the play. And again credit Wangler for throwing the ball in there after having heavy heavy pressure. Uh, he just barely got the ball off. Jim Fonhorst is one of the key performers on the Minnesota defense. He's trying to get back underneath uh, that uh, zone coverage, and uh, Anthony made the catch, had the first down before he get there. First and 10, Minnesota 39-yard line, and Wangler takes to the air again. Carter gets one right on the sideline. That's about a 10-yard gain, depending on the marking now, whether or not it's a first down. Looks like Michigan has adjusted too offensively in picking up the blitz that has forced Wangler to throw a couple of his passes early. The man uh, responsible for the blitz is number 24, Wolfolk. Now watch Butch. There he picks up the blitzer, and there is a good uh, time for Wangler to throw on a quick out cut, and Anthony makes the nice catch. Nine and a half yards is the gain, so it's second down and one, we will call it, at the Minnesota 29-yard line, right in between the 29 and 30. Great situation, second and very short yardage. Stanley Edwards gets the first down, not much more. Minnesota defense swarming pretty well now and adjusting to the runs that Michigan opened with early, but the passes are opening up, the quick passes to the flat, and Michigan has moved so far 50 yards, 53 yards in all. First and 10, 27 yard line of Minnesota for John Wangler and the Wolverines. Wolfolk up the middle, big opening. There's your first down. There's your touchdown. Butch Wolfolk bursting 27 yards for a Michigan score. Butch Wolfolk has just really, on this drive, the kind of football that I think Bo Schembechler wants to see Butch play. First of all, it's a good call and that they have it blocked well. I think they're fading back looking for the pass from Michigan because they've been successful. They kick him out, and Butch has a big hole underneath. Now watch number 30 downfield. That's Alan Mitchell. Well, we won't be able to see his block, but there he is getting up. He got the cornerback inside. That freed up the corner for Butch, and with his great speed, went for the corner and got in easily. Ball is set for Haji Sheet. The conversion attempt is good. And in the first quarter, Michigan has taken a 7-0 lead over Minnesota. 
Ali Haji Sheik set to kick off for Michigan following that touchdown deep for Minnesota, number 49, Teddy Watson, and number 40, Roy Artis. They are standing near the goal line as Sheik moves forward and kicks it just short of the Minnesota end zone, five-yard line, where it is picked off by Watson, and he is straight ahead and not quite to the 20, probably the 19-yard line, but a penalty flag is down. Clipping the call against the Gophers, and that'll move them back even further. The ball is just over the 18 at this point. 13 yards on the kick return by Watson. The Michigan defense will go to work in an excellent position, and the Minnesota offense will have to start working from its own eight-yard line. Michigan has a couple changes, too, up front defensively. Bo has been concerned about the interior of the line. Middle guard is now Jeff Shaw. Uh, one of the tackles is Cedric Colts, and those guys are both first-time starters. Shaw has played in the past, but hasn't started. There's the backfield we told you about. Gary White, Marion Barber lined up behind freshman quarterback Tim Salem, the coach's son. Couldn't ask for much more pressure than that, but young Tim has responded. Barber on the pitch, makes his own hole and gets about six yards. Gergash, one of the Michigan tacklers, there were a bunch, but they were way too late to stop that play. Give him uh, eight yards on the pickup. It is second and two. Michigan taking the first four and a half minutes of this game to go 80 yards in 11 plays. Butch Wolfolk's 27-yard touchdown run right through the middle of the Gopher defense. Second down and two. In motion is Cooper. And that's Barber slashing ahead for a first down over the 20-yard line. Marion Barber, and perhaps the most unhappy thing about this young man's performance in Minnesota is he's out of Detroit's Chadsey High School. Absolutely. He is just an outstanding back. He's gone over 100 yards in eight games in his career. And uh, the way he's running early, he might be going over it again today. The set for Minnesota on first and 10 from their own 21-yard line. Gary White gets the call this time, spins off a couple, and is brought down by Robert Thompson. But again, it's a gain of perhaps four yards. Michigan's defensive set with the adjustments, defensive backfield, however, looking familiar, but the substitutes have changed in that backfield. Evan Cooper and John Lott are standing by, and we saw a little of them last week. Second down and six for the Gophers, as Cooper, the man in motion, just goes from one side of the field to the other and hasn't been involved in a play so far. Barber, near the first down, but a little short of the 30-yard line. Canavino knocked the legs out from underneath him. Mel Owens and Mike Turgovac also there to stack up Marion Barber. Andy Canavino's got a big job today looking after Marion Barber. Here he gets through the hole and gets a hand on him, but Barber runs right through him. And Barber has averaged 5.5 yards a carry this year. Anything over four is considered very good. Over five, and you're talking excellent. Third down and three, Minnesota, 28-yard line. Gary White, he's got the necessary yardage for the first down. Michigan defenders are there, but not quite quick enough. First down, Gophers. You know, there's nothing fancy about this offense. Last year, Joe Salem, uh, in his first year as head coach at Minnesota, called it a junkyard offense, where he threw a lot of sets at you, a lot of motion, threw a lot of people in different places and tried to gain yardage. This year, there's not a whole lot of things to it except Line up Gary White and Marion Barber behind your quarterback and hand off to one of them and let them go. First and 10, Gophers at their own 32. Man in motion is Weckbacker this time. But it's Barber again. And this time, not very much running room at all. Coming through quickly, Marion Body, who tripped him in the backfield, Cedric Coles made it complete. But there's no gain. It's second and 10. 
that's the best kind of defense against this kind of offense because then you're going to have to open it up if you can't get those good first down and five or six yards of carry. Absolutely. I think we might see Michigan on first down defensively, maybe gambling a little bit, running some linebackers through holes, bringing a safety man up there, try to fill some holes so that they force Minnesota into that second and long. They've got it now, and Kelvin Jenkins, number one, splits out to the bottom of your screen. Weckbacker to the top, and Salem rolls to throw. Got Gary White as fullback. Carpenter upends him, but that's a gain of about eight yards, maybe nine. And perhaps the whole ten. It will be. That should be the first down. Gary White has caught six passes, rather five passes this year, for 66 yards. Very simple pattern. Uh, Michigan, of course, so concerned with the run with those two great backs in there. White came through the line of scrimmage on a play fake, just ran in the flat and was wide open. First and 10, Minnesota. 44-yard line of the Gophers. Marion Barber, good blocking in the Michigan territory. And that's close to a 10-yard gain. That was student body right. There were all kinds of Jers Burgundy jerseys in front of Marion Barber. Well, they call it gold country here in uh, Minnesota, and you'll watch nothing but gold coming around this end. And he finds a crease after breaking the tackle of Shaw. And uh, I'll tell you, if it wouldn't have been for Thompson in there, uh, Marion Barber could have gone for a few more. Got nine as it is, second and one. Minnesota at the Michigan 47-yard line. Barber straight ahead, keeping his feet, diving down to about the 41. First down, Minnesota. Putting together a nice drive against Michigan. Not That's nice if you're rooting for Michigan, however. I think the thing that they're doing is that Michigan is probably playing better defense up front from those people in the interior three down linemen, but they're not wrapping the ball carrier up. That time he was stopped for no gain, but just kind of walked down the line of scrimmage, looked for an opening, and managed to fall forward for about three or four. First and ten, Weckbacker in motion. Salem pitches to Barber, quick opening. Got a blocker in front of him. Barber tripped up by Gergash. But he is at about the 37 of Michigan. Second and five. Boy, that hole opened very quickly, and Barber, although a big 230-pounder, got through there in a hurry. Well, Michigan gambled on defense first down. They ran the cornerback through there. He was picked up by Gary White, the fullback, and Gergash had to come over from his inside linebacker position to make the stop. Second and five. Again, the man in motion, and that happens, it seems like, every play. Michigan jumping defensively. Barber gets the pitch. They are there. That's Turgovac hanging on to the ankle, but the penalty flags are down, and I think it may go against Michigan. Oh, that's a shame, too, because I think the play, even if Michigan weren't offsides, would not have been successful. It was not blocked very well, and really, the Michigan guys were on their way back at the stop of the ball, so they didn't get any advantage by the offside. Let's look at it. You see the guys are going back. They're actually uh, back where they started in the beginning of the, uh, at the beginning of the play. Turgovac just beats the block and gets across. Uh, it's a shame that uh, they encroached on the neutral zone and have to take the five-yard penalty because I don't think the play would have been successful had they not jumped. Going to measure in this circumstance because the five yards was all they needed. We'll have to see if that is exactly the case as they bring in the chain. Jim, I'm surprised. Uh, I know they love their football up here, but it looks like about 55, 56,000 capacity, and it did not look like a good day at all this morning with that heavy snowfall. It is first down, Minnesota. Absolutely. They had talked about possibly 10,000 no-shows in the press box before the game, and yet you will not find an empty seat in this ballpark. Maybe a few down in the corners, down near the end zone, but really pretty much every seat in this house is taken. For a two and three team. Of course, one of those losses to Southern Cal, I think they counted as a win. They played so well against uh, SC. First and 10, Minnesota at the Michigan 32-yard line. Gary White, straight ahead, knocked down by Mel Owens, loose ball. Indication seems to be that it still belongs to Minnesota. And if that is the case, credit 
number 58 with a recovery, Ed Olson, the sophomore center. Also, I think this is a big break for Michigan in that the fumble, the ball came back towards the Minnesota line of scrimmage. There you see, he's popped in there. The ball comes back towards the line of scrimmage, uh, whereas White had about five yards on the gain, and they'll only give him two where the ball was recovered. Second down and eight. But Minnesota marching, a drive that started at their own eight. Salem to throw again. Overthrow this time. Skipping into the end zone, no receiver there. And it's third and eight for the Gophers. Salem throwing this year is 48 of 90. That's 53%. But one of the big statistics that I think that is indicative of the fact that he's a freshman is that he has thrown seven interceptions. And uh, that's a sign of inexperience, throwing into coverage. And uh, as Tim Salem gets older, he'll be an outstanding quarterback, not just because he's the coach's son. Cooper split left. Jenkins wide right. On a third and eight passing situation, Salem runs out of it and there is knocked down and that'll be short of the first down. Robert Thompson got him. Although we may get a measurement on that one. If we don't, the crowd is already urging the Gophers to go for it on fourth down. Minnesota runs a sprint out or roll out, if you will. And Michigan has really caved in. Robert Thompson, 99, has outside responsibility. He turns Salem back up inside, then come back to make the hit. Fourth down and two. They're a couple of yards short, but they're going to go for it on this play from the Michigan 24-yard line. Salem with Barber and White split behind him. Fakes to White. Salem looking for all of it. Going to run. Got a little bit before Thompson knocked him down. And they definitely going to have to see if that was enough. Salem waited and waited. Nothing opened up as far as pass receivers are concerned. And I think he waited too long. Real good coverage for the secondary on Calvin Jenkins. He was the primary receiver. And uh, Michigan had him covered. And Salem makes a wise decision by pulling the ball down and going for it. Uh, Thompson hit him from the side, and Salem was powerful enough to fall forward and get a couple extra, which might be worth the first down. Stretching the chain out. No. He missed it by less than a foot, I think. And that big turnover puts Michigan back on offense. Minnesota driving from its own eight-yard line down to the Michigan 22 before the drive stalls. On the next series of downs, Michigan was forced to punt, so we move ahead to action later in the quarter. Just a minute, four seconds left in the first quarter of play. Cold, gray day in Minneapolis. Michigan leading 7-0 on a 27-yard touchdown run by Butch Wolfo. Third down and long, Cooper goes in motion, and you would expect Salem to roll out and throw. And that's what he's trying to do. Got right to pullback. First down. Wrapped up by Keith Fostick and thrown down, but a big gain on that play down to the Michigan 32. Same play they used in their opening drive. Run the fullback through on a play action and run him out into the flat. There is really nobody to cover. I got to believe there's a missed assignment here. Here's number nine just out into the flat. And there is nobody around. And there are three people chasing him. Finally, Bostic who is actually covering the deep receiver, had to come back up and make the hit. 22 yards gained on the play. First down, Minnesota at the Michigan 33. Barber trying to pick his way through. Jumps outside. Rolled out of bounds by Canovino and Marion Body. Blocking broke down on that one, and still, Barber found a way to gain some yards. Again, I was talking about it earlier, Larry. Michigan's defensive front is stalemating Minnesota at the line of scrimmage, but they're not wrapping up the ball carrier when he gets there. They got to grab legs and uh, make sure that, you know, they get a leg and hold on because Barber will bounce outside and get yardage. He did then for four yards at second and six. Cooper in motion and Salem is looking to throw. The short one to White. Carpenter missed him. Bostic knocks him down at the 26-yard line. 
Minnesota on the move. That's the 16-yard line correction. And a first down, Gophers. Somebody has got to be covering him, and they are not. It's very simple. There you see, he just runs into the line of scrimmage and right out to the flat. Salem rolls out and just dumps it off to him, and there is nobody there defensively. Carpenter's in the secondary, misses on the first one. Then it's Bostic and Geargash coming up to secure it. Time runs out of the first quarter. The score, Michigan 7, Minnesota nothing, but the Gophers are on the move. First and 10, Minnesota at the 16-yard line of Michigan. Pitch back to Barber. Got the room. Called out of bounds by Bostic, and a penalty flag is thrown after the tackle. But regardless, Minnesota is inside the Michigan five with a first down. Good blocking is what it is. Uh, comes outside, sees the hole develop outside, and he gets a good block on the corner. Right there it is by number 43. That's Chester Cooper. And then Barber with that great speed runs outside and gets good yardage. Here comes Cooper's block right there, and that counts on getting him about an extra five. Bostic makes a hit. Let's see if we can see it out of bounds. I think it's the way he threw him out of bounds that the referee gave him the 15-yard penalty, or rather it'll be half distance to the goal because they're down in the two in threatening. And the crowd loving it. There you see it, the way the first quarter stacks up. Looks like Minnesota should be ahead, but Michigan finished that quarter 7-0 lead. Although that shutout in danger right now with a first and goal from the two-yard line. Barber or White, take your pick. It's Barber, touchdown Minnesota. Set straight dive. One of the most basic plays in football. You just run the offensive line in there, block them one on one, hand it off to the guy, and let him run ahead. And that's all there is to it. Touchdown, Minnesota. Randy Sonnefeld, number 81, though, kind of had a hold of Mel Owens. Now, I'm not saying it makes much difference on the play because he had him pretty well blocked, too. Big hole for Marion Barber, and he's going to go two yards with that opening, but three plays are fun. Jim Gallery is 14 for 14, an extra point. Make it 15 for 15, and we are all tied up at seven. Jim Gallery to kick off for Minnesota. As usual, it's Carter and Edwards at the Michigan goal line to receive. A short kick this time, falling near the 20-yard line, drop, loose ball, still a scramble for it. Michigan has recovered, the official says, but there was some doubt about that for a long time. Kenny Gear was diving in there looking for a loose ball, and I think he's the man who finally came up with it. Michigan, uh, big mistake here, really cost them better field position. Ingram tries to make the original catch. Ingram uh, dropped it in. It's Anthony Carter who actually comes up from his deep position to make the fumble recovery. Time of possession. Minnesota has had the ball twice as long as Michigan, Jim, and that would figure with two good long drives. Ten minutes for Minnesota, five minutes for Michigan. First and ten Wolverines at their own 22-yard line. And Wanger takes to the air. Or wanted to. Going nowhere. Fred Orgus, number 90, knocked him off his feet for a loss of about five. Thought for a minute he was going to cut that loose. Intended for Alan Mitchell, who had made his turn inside. And then Wanger just did not let go. And Orgus did. Yep, it looked like John was undecided whether he might try to turn it up a little bit and run but uh, never got the chance because Orgas laid the wood to him. Lost four, second down and 14. Now back at the 17-yard line of Michigan. 
Gopher start out with an 11 man line and then drop back four. Now drop back a couple more as Wanga drops back. Complete and out of bounds after a gain of about six or seven. Tight end Dunaway. That'll get him honest anyway as far as their defensive sets are concerned, but that won't get you your first down. Same pattern they threw earlier to Norm Best to get a big first down. Wangler getting good protection. They beat the blitz. Gets it off just in time. Dunaway all the way from his tight end position on the other side of the formation across the field. Third down and seven at the 24. Got the throw on this one. Wild for Stanley Edwards. Fine catch and a first down. Edwards runs over the top of Dana Noel. But that's a Michigan first down and a big third down play. Nice catch by Stanley. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stanley made the play and the fact that he made that good catch. Same pass pattern that Minnesota has run very successfully to Gary White. Pull back in the flat. Wangler puts it up and Stanley has to go up, brings it down, then turns it up field, puts his lower shoulder down and dives for a little extra. First down, big third down play. Now out at the Michigan 40 yard line. Some better field position. Edwards tries to go straight ahead. Orgus knocks him down after the gain of maybe two yards. Tom Peterson also on the tackle. Stanley Edwards is the backup tailback today, too, with Lawrence Ricks out and injured. So Edwards is the first team fullback and the second team tailback. You know, we talk about running backs in this ballgame. Larry, of the eight top rushers in the Big Ten, five of them are suited up today. Lawrence Ricks for Michigan, Butch Wolfolk, Stanley Edwards, Marion Barber, and Gary White. Not a bad group of running backs on this football field today. Second down and nine, and yet passing has been prominent in this game. And Wangler looks to throw again. Nowhere to go. Thrown down by Jeff Shue, 96. After that play, just collapsed around John Wangler. I got to believe that the pattern was run wrong. John goes back, takes one look, and knows he's in trouble. He doesn't see anybody, and he looks to scramble. And the protection, you know, they're coming on third down. Or other first, uh, was it the second down? I don't, I don't know where I am. Well, it's cold up here. My mind is going. <laughs> Five out of seven for John. He's going to need one here on third down and 14. Cranks it up for Carter. Got him. There's your first down, and Anthony runs out of bounds at the Minnesota 30. You know, it's tough to cover Anthony, we told him, and they're singling him on the outside. Single coverage on the outside. If he doesn't go back down inside into where they're traffic, Anthony's got single coverage. Foxworth tries, Anthony just runs by him. Wangler puts it where it's supposed to be on the outside shoulder. Anthony takes it, goes out of bounds. Well executed play. First down, Michigan. Penalty flags are thrown. We get a false jump. John Wangler looks to the bench to see if everything is still the same or are we going to change plays. Illegal procedure, Michigan. Going to have to go a little further. That's all. It'll be first and 15. And back at the 35-yard line. Bo Schembechler on the headphones. Sending in what he hopes will work. Alan Mitchell. Split end to the right. Anthony Carter flanked up to the left. Top of your screen. On a first and 15. Gophers jumping. Try the delay. And Butch Wolfolk is tripped and knocked down. Excellent defensive play. By number 89, Jim Fonhorst. The linebacker read it all the way as they tried to run the trap delay. And Fonhorst did not get fooled. They call Fonhorst the Fonz. And, uh... Right here, he gets in the middle of it. Butch almost had trouble hanging on to that one. It shows you the great speed of Fonhorst. 6'4", 220, and yet he catches Butch from behind. And you know about Butch's speed. Second down and 17 as they lost a pair on that. Wangler gets some time. Dunaway cannot hang on. Had the short gain underneath with the tight end again, but Dunaway couldn't hold on. Third down and 17. Now Dunaway's four, made four receptions this year for 80 yards, a big one of 55 last week against Michigan State. Good protection, passes there. Dunaway just doesn't hang on. Touchdown catch against State, touchdown catch against Notre Dame. 
Been a good season for this youngster already. Dunaway, sophomore from Upper St. Clair, Pennsylvania. Third and 17. Wangler. Play action, but no fake. They know he's throwing. Norm Betts hangs on, but it's just inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. And that still leaves a long way to go. Fourth down and probably time to go for the field goal. It's obvious that the pass is there. Michigan has gone back to it now about four times in this game already. And John is getting excellent protection that allows the tight end to come underneath. Now there again, you see the pass open. Betts makes a good catch. All you need in college is one foot down inside, uh, inbounds, and now Ali Hajishik will try it. 35-yard line, 45 yards if it sails through, and it does. A sidewinder that spun its way through the goalpost. Sheik now has five out of seven, and Michigan has taken a 10-7 lead over Minnesota. Watson and Artis deep to receive the kickoff from Sheik. It bounces one time where it is fielded by Artis, and he starts up, gets almost to the 30-yard line. Good return by Roy Artis. After an exchange of possessions, we pick up the action later in the quarter. The Gophers take over. First and 10 at their own 15-yard line. Big play by Wittes. Salem fumbles the snap, gets the pitch back to Barber. Turgovac hits him. Thompson hits him. And down he goes at the 10-yard line. Marion Body is also there. And Robert Thompson sealing the tackle that Turgovac started. There's one thing for sure. If you don't get Marion Body to the ball on time, and much he can do with it. Was that profound? I like it. Oh, thanks. I like it, Jim. <laughs> Second down, 14 to go. Gophers back very close to their own 10-yard line. Send the man in motion, which they have done most of the afternoon. Go back to Barber. Fumbles it. Loose ball recovered by Michigan at the four-yard line. So the brakes just reversed themselves. The Michigan drive continues. Robert Thompson? No, it's number 92, Cedric Coles. Similar things happened last year in Ann Arbor. Here's the pitch. Body gets it. It was a good pitch from Salem, but Marion Barber just does not hold on. It gets through, and Cedric Coles hangs on. Now, he was brought down there by a face mask. He got a good, a good lick there on his neck, but uh, the referee didn't call it. Michigan gets the ball first and goal on the five. Cedric Coles has played his way into this defensive lineup, a junior out of Detroit's De St. Martin de Porras High School. And that big fumble recovery gives Michigan a first down at the five. Puts Wolfolk straight ahead. Gets probably four of that five, at least three. And he had the ball wrapped up in both arms. <laughs> As we said, Butch has had very good success against Minnesota when he was a freshman in his first game where he saw a lot of action. He ran for 131 yards and then last year as a sophomore he picked them up for 194 against these Gophers. Second and goal. A yard and a half away. Which Wolfolk crashes in. Touchdown Michigan. Who was that? Which Wolfolk? That's right. We'll give him a new name today. As my lips get colder <laughs> the words get tougher. Very simple play. Straight ahead blocking. You look Bubba Paris over there. Stanley Edwards gets a good block on the corner. Butch then just picks his way, takes a hop step. Look at that, both arms on the football. Butch is not gonna fumble down close. Sheik has already converted once and added a 45-yard field goal. Hewlett holds, the kick is up and good. And Michigan has a 17-7 lead over Minnesota. Three twenty-seven left in the half as Sheik lines up to kick off to Minnesota. Artist number 40, Watson 49. Deep near the goal line for the Gophers. And this one's going to sail into the end zone. Artist a couple of yards deep will run it out. And just 
not get back to the 20-yard line. Just over the 15 before he is hit and knocked down. Minnesota first and 10 at their own 18-yard line. Excellent coverage by Michigan's kickoff on that time. 21 yards for Artis on the return, but he started in his own end zone, so they aren't to the 21. A big interception, and Minnesota thought they had stopped the Michigan drive, but then they fumbled. And now they are deep in their own territory again, but they come right back with a pitch to Barber, and he is crashed right near the line of scrimmage. No gain. Or a yard if that. Turgovac met him head on, stalled him, and then got assists on the tackles. Only took two plays after the fumble recovery by Cedric Coles to cover the five yards necessary. Wolfolk on both carries gets his second touchdown of the afternoon. Second and ten, Minnesota. And they split Cooper out to the left. Salem rolls, looks to run, gets over the 20-yard line before he is spun down. Turgovac on the tackle. That'd be a gain of two or maybe three yards. Make it four yards. It's third down and six. Good play by Mike Turgovac. Great pursuit. You see him. He's on this side, takes an inside go, and then just follows the pursuit and then beats the block of 76 to make the hit. That's just good hustle and good pursuit by Mike Turgovac. Third down at the Minnesota 21-yard line. Third and six with two minutes and four seconds left in the half. Man in motion. Salem instead. Keeps and looks to run. Then throws downfield. Way overthrown. Incomplete. Fourth down coming up, and the Gophers will have to punt it away. Fourth down and six. Anthony Carter back to receive this punt near the 50-yard line. Greg Smith ready to punt from about his own 10 when he steps forward and hits the ball. And again into the wind, and it just hangs, and a fair catch is the call for Anthony. He barely has room, but makes the catch at the 49-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 Michigan, their own 49-yard line, with a minute 52 seconds to play in the half. Langler has the eye behind him with Edwards and Wolfolk. And Wolfolk it is. Cuts back left. Should have the first down, and he does. Cracking inside the Minnesota 40. And Wolfolk is hurt, and that's the worst thing could happen to Michigan today as they're already short in tailbacks. Mike Robb made the hit, and it was very low. And... Butch gets a good hold of the outside, bounces it outside on the draw. Now watch him, he'll lower the shoulder. We'll see if we can pick up where the injury occurs. He gets a good shoulder right on the knee, and it might be the left knee, or he came down on the football and has had the breath knocked out of him. It's very difficult to tell at this point. They're not working on a knee. Usually they lay him on the back, and I think maybe he just has the wind knocked out. I think you see on the sideline an interesting thing, Larry Rick. And John Wangler talking with uh, Bo Schembechler. And it looks like a little bit of a limp. And Ricks goes in. So we see Lawrence Ricks, and we didn't expect to today. Took a good shot on the ankle last week against Michigan State. And I think Bo would have liked to have held him out of this game and let that heal a little bit. First and ten on the run by Wolfolk. And he trots to the sideline, appears to be all right. Wangler to throw on first down. Carter is open. Penalty flag. Carter catches the ball. Runs out of bounds at the 19-yard line of Minnesota. Let's see what else the penalty flag is. And it was thrown in the vicinity of Carter as though somebody interfered with his progress downfield.
be a 20-yard gain if it stays. And the way they're looking at the John Wangler and talking uh, with Lilja. They pass up the quarterback, go to my offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> Got to talk to the captain in this instance. Interference is the call against Minnesota. It is declined because that's not as many yards as we picked up on the pass completion to Carter. Real good, strong arm and good protection for John Wangler. Anthony comes out, takes an inside go on the cornerback, and then just cuts it outside. Ball is thrown perfectly. Anthony out to the sideline, just cradles it in, takes one step in, and he's out of bounds. Nice, nice camera work by our guys down on the sideline. Minute 29 remaining in the half. First down, 20-yard line. Barry John Wangler never had a chance. Coming hard from the cornerback was Mike Robb. Boy, he blitzed on the gamble and never looked back. Well, it's an eight-man rush, and there are only five guys to block. <laughs> and here comes the open man. Look out, John Wangler. A loss of eight on the play. It is second down and 18 at the Minnesota 28. Michigan trying to add to their 17-7 lead before the half ends. Ricks is the tailback. He gets the call and gets it over the 25-yard line. Down to about the 23. Fred Orgas making the tackle for Minnesota. Clock running. One minute left to play. A couple of timeouts left for Michigan, however, so they can stop that clock if they choose to. 50 seconds. This is a spot for Anthony Carter. Uh, they're doubling up on him, too. Minnesota's got two guys out there watching him closely. You saw him go out to the top of your screen in this formation. Wangler with a play-action fake over the middle. Got Carter. That is at the 12-yard line, short of a first down. 29 seconds to go, and Michigan calls timeout. The double coverage, they have one guy underneath watching him very closely and another guy who is deeper. Now, Anthony just beats the short man on a quick post across the middle. Good coverage, but, you know, Anthony's in front, shields the defender with his body, makes the catch. That's a good game for Michigan, but it puts him down in fourth down position with about a couple yards to go. 29 seconds left on the clock. Here's where we make that decision, field goal, or go for the first down and the touchdown. A field goal is the answer, although Michigan has run fakes from this formation a couple of times this year. One worked, one didn't. Cheek with a field goal so far and a couple of conversions. Hewlett is the holder or the runner passer if this is not a field goal. It'll be the 19-yard line, 29 yards if good. And it is up and through, and Michigan adds three points to its total with 25 seconds left in the half. It's Michigan 20, Minnesota 7. Artis and Watson are deep for Minnesota. Haji Sheik, who has had a busy first half, set to kick off again. Watson, way deep in the end zone, going to try to run it out. He was back about nine yards or so and doesn't get it to the 10-yard line, but had to run a long way to get it there. Good coverage by the kick return team. You wonder about that decision to run it out, Larry, but really with, you know, very little time remaining in the half, I guess, you know, it, it can't hurt and he might, you know, be able to break one and get some good yardage. So, you know, although it looked kind of silly for the decision to come out, it wasn't really that bad considering the time on the clock. And the fact that, you know, it sure couldn't hurt, and he might have broke one. But you got such bad field position. Well, what's it going to do for you, though, with only 20 seconds left in the half anyway? Better not fumble. First and 10 at your own nine-yard line for Minnesota. Fumble recovered by Michigan. What'd you say? What is it? You, you've been taking Houdini pills or something? Cedric Coles again recovers the fumble, and Michigan has 18 seconds to work with and one timeout. But Cedric Coles gets his first start at defensive tackle and certainly has made good use of it. Here you go, and, and Gary White never got the football, and Cedric Coles was right there to make the, uh, the recovery. 
So I guess now looking back, hindsight being 2020 and me always a proponent of hindsight, that was a <laughs> terrible decision to run that kickoff out. Eight yard line, first and goal for Michigan. Time is their biggest problem right now. One setback is Edwards. Carter in motion. We've seen this formation before. Look for Carter. Got him. Slides out of bounds. That stops the clock, and he's about the three-yard line. Took only five seconds off the clock. I think Michigan's gone to the well with that one too many times. Take a look at the play. They got two receivers out to the right side, bring Anthony Carter across the formation, and go to him in the flat and let him run in. Now, Anthony this time gets it, but there are a lot of people. They got it figured what they're going to do. Anthony has 12 career TD catches. That's third place in Michigan history, and he's just into the middle of his sophomore year. That doesn't tell you something about Anthony Carter. Second down just inside the three. Lob in the corner for Carter. He couldn't get there, being bumped by Dana Noel. That'll make it third down. Stops the clock. Ten seconds to go. Plenty of time to really crash it in there. They have timeouts remaining, so, you know, they can go with the run. Carter comes out. That means they put a pair of tight ends in there, and that is an indication that they're going to run. Ricks is deep behind Edwards, and it's Ricks getting the call. Runs into a stone wall, does not make it at all. Five seconds left in the half. And Michigan going to go for the field goal. Well, they got the ball on the five-yard line. Tried a couple of passes. To, you know, you might have thought, use their timeouts and just try to punch it in with the big running back. Instead, now they'll try to settle for three with Haji Sheik. I think they might well have had it had not uh, Carter lost his footing at the sideline. He only had to go another couple of yards. Instead, they'll try for three points out of this fumble recovery. Sheik's kick is up and very strong and good. Make it 23 to 7, Michigan, with two seconds left in the half. Just enough time for this kickoff before the half ends. It's a ground ball. It bounces off a lineman. The Gophers cover it up. And time runs out on the half with Michigan leading Minnesota at halftime, 23 to 7. Comedian Bob Hope, the special guest honored here at Minnesota's homecoming, and that's about the happiest thing the Gopher fans have going for them. Really, the Gophers self-destructed in the first half, really giving Michigan 13 points without the, the turnovers that Minnesota made late in the first half. It'd be a 10-7 game, but uh, Michigan took advantage and got 13 points. Statistically, it looks about even. Absolutely. Total yards, Michigan with 212, Minnesota with 150. But the difference there is that Michigan has gotten 23 points, and they haven't had to do much for it. Uh, they've gotten the ball on the five-yard line twice. They got the ball inside the 20 another time. The turnovers are the big key in that halftime statistic. Best-looking thing for Michigan fans, that very first drive that Butch Wolfo capped with a beautiful 27-yard run. Absolutely. I think not only was the run good, but the fact that the call was made well. It was a early down. Michigan had been passing, and they go to the draw. The line just opens up a gaping hole through the middle, and then Butch breaks it outside, gets a good block downfield from Alan Mitchell, number 30. There is nobody in that corner of the end zone. Butch is in there easily, and it's a 7 nothing football game. It looked like Michigan was on their way easily. But the Gophers came back and put a great drive together on the ground, basically, against Michigan. Run a straight dive with their great back, Marion Barber, and Barber goes in, and, you know, we're tied up, and everybody's thinking, wait a minute, this is a ball game yet. But then... Again, Minnesota started turning the ball over. Michigan came back, got another touchdown, following a turnover deep in Minnesota territory. It was Wolfolk going in from the one, and really that's the story of the game, the fact that Minnesota has turned the ball over and given Michigan easy chances to get points. The same kind of mistakes they made, which hurt them against Southern Carroll earlier this year. Yeah. We'll have to see if they can stop those mistakes, because I know they want to, and Minnesota does have that good running attack we talked about, which we'll look at now as the second half is about to begin. The sentiments of the Minnesota Gopher fans, for sure. 
The little brown jug. Uh, you really don't understand what the little brown jug is all about until you've been involved in this rivalry. I think it's lost a little bit of its luster because Minnesota hasn't had that great team they've had in the past, but you really find out how important the jug is once you lose it. And that happened a few years ago here in Minneapolis to the Wolverines, and they don't want to let it happen again. She kicks off to start the second half. Watson is deep. He decides not to run this one out from the five-yard line. On the next series of downs, Minnesota was forced to punt. So we move ahead to action later in the quarter. And Stanley Edwards becomes the tailback with Gerald Ingram, the fullback, getting thin in the Michigan backfield. Ingram gets an early carry and gets near the 40-yard line for a pickup of three. Well, the crowd has quieted some since Michigan widened the gap on the scoreboard. There aren't too many people leaving, though. But it's got to be cold, because <laughs> we're up here with the windows out, and it's cold up here. Second down, seven yards to go for a first down from the Michigan 40-yard line. Mitchell split right, Carter split left. Edwards takes the pitch, hurdles Ingram. Gets 10 quick yards. He's at the 50-yard line. Stanley Edwards gets Michigan a first down. Of course, Stanley is no stranger to the tailback position. That's an advantage, but Michigan is thin, and that Stanley is the last one we've got with any experience. Absolutely. Stanley makes a good move there, jumping over the block of Ingram, and just turns it on outside. That's a real plus, the fact that Michigan has Stanley Edwards in there in the game who is familiar with the tailback position after having moved to fullback this year after having played tailback for three years first and 10 49 on the minnesota side of the field ingram bangs straight ahead to about the 45 wrapped up by mike robb and others minnesota getting three tacklers to the point of the ball rather quickly Fonhorst is one of them with orgus and Rob. Second down, six yards to go for a first down for Michigan. Minnesota took the opening kickoff, marched into Michigan territory, and stalled. Michigan started this drive at their own 27 yard line. Wangler to Carter, one on one, and Anthony breaks for the sideline. Gets away from Noel and is finally tripped before he disappears down the far sideline. Oh, that's the situation you want with Anthony Carter. He's got the ball, and it's one-on-one -on -one in the open field. Well, they're doubling up, up on the inside, taking away the post. All they do is get him the ball with a little room. Now, look at those quick feet. Now, he almost breaks this outside. He gets tripped up. That's almost impossible to get him out there. He's got room. He just gives him a little duke inside. Now he's outside. Now watch him just turn on the burners. Oh, and if he is not tripped up there, he might have gone for a long way. First down, Edwards trying a sweep right. Wittes comes up quickly to head it off and gets an assist from Fonhorst. Stanley Edwards is averaging 4.7 yards per carry. It's really good when you got three backs in your backfield, two of them averaging just under six, and the other one just under five. You can go to all three of them, and there are three very, very successful backs. Stanley got only one that time. It's second down and nine. However, the field position is excellent. The ball is at the 23-yard line of Minnesota. Langer to throw. A play action. Carter over the middle in the corner for Mitchell. Bounce out of his hands, but he was going to be out of bounds anyway. That's two choices there. Both were open for a moment. I think primary receiver was Alan Mitchell. He was in the corner. They're doubling up on the inside again, as we said, with Anthony Carter. Wangler looks at Anthony. He's in the middle open, but there's a linebacker in front of them. And then you see Mitchell coming out, making an out cut to the flag. Ball thrown a little bit out of bounds. Allen cannot make the catch. Third down and nine. 
they don't make it here, Haji Sheik probably again. Throw to the corner for Carter. He got it. Anthony Carter took it right away from Rick Wittes. Touchdown, Michigan. You know, every time he makes a catch, he amazes you, right? Well, he just amazed you again. This ball actually was thrown short, okay? Now, Anthony's running down a straight fly. They got him double covered. He beats the short man. Now, watch this. He just goes up. He sees he makes it a little deep inside. Goes up, no offensive interference. Takes it one-handed and goes into the end zone. Sheik to attempt the conversion. Hewlett will hold. Sheik has been perfect so far today. And that kick is equally perfect. So it is Michigan 30 and Minnesota 7. Eight minutes, 54 seconds left in the third quarter. Haji Sheik is kicking off again. Artis and Watson are deep for Minnesota. Watson driven back to the back of the end zone, and he has learned his lesson. No run back. After a turnover, we pick up the action later in the quarter with Michigan in possession. Rich Hewlett now at quarterback for Michigan on this first and 10 from the 14-yard line, and Hewlett rolls out and dives out of bounds up at the 25-yard line. That's a first down. Rich Hewlett getting some action and getting a quick 10 yards. Well, oh, it's the difference, I think, with Rich Hewlett and John Wangler in the game. Wangler, of course, was injured last year in the Gator Bowl. His knee does not permit him to be real mobile. This is a rollout pass, an extra added dimension to the offense when your quarterback is able to run. And that is the strength that Rich Hewlett has. You see there, he lowers that shoulder in there, much like a running back, and not like a lot of quarterbacks who will just step out of bounds. Gives you one more runner since you're already short tailbacks. Because the tailback is Stanley Edwards, who gets that carry up for three yards. Ingram is your fullback, and Wolfolk and Ricks are on the sideline nursing injuries. Also, interesting, we might see before the day's over the much heralded freshman from uh, Grand Blank, Steve Smith, at quarterback for Michigan. Give him a gain of two, make it second down and eight. Two and a half minutes to play third quarter. Big play by Jerry Berge on fourth down from the five. He sacked the Minnesota quarterback, Tim Salem. Hewlett turns and fumbles the ball. And Minnesota's got it on the Michigan 20. They go to the option, and you got to block the option. There's no question. They just didn't have any blocking at all on the front side of the play. And Hewlett, it's a counter option. There's the step to give the linebackers uh, uh, a shot the other way, and there was no opening there at all. He is hit as soon as he makes the turnaround in the fumble recovery. So the Gophers get their second quick opportunity now. Brett Harms was the man in on the recovery, Larry. Let's see what they can do with this one. First and 10 at the 20. Now, you know, when Rich Hewlett's in the game, they're going to run option football, but they haven't run it in so long. Maybe those offensive linemen a little bit rusty in the blocking technique. Man in motion is Chester Cooper. Barber trips on his own and gets maybe the 19-yard line. Gets one. Second down and nine. Winfred Carraway is now the Michigan nose guard, and I think he got a hand on White. Second down and nine. White straight ahead. Down to about the 15-yard line. Caraway and Jeff Shaw combined with Andy Canavino to stop that one. five Minnesota the turnover didn't help them last time they get a second chance and Salem throws complete inside the five Marion Barber roll 
pulled down at the three-yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Tony Jackson. Single coverage because they had the blitz coming. Watch Salem. He'll take a good shot from Mel Owens as soon as he delivers it. And Barber is out there, single coverage, out of the backfield. Tough coverage for the safety Jackson to come over and make it. Ball delivered right on target, and Barber now has Minnesota in business for a possible touchdown. First and goal at the inside the three of Michigan. Barber whispers something to Gary White. Probably the count. Barber straight ahead, the way they scored the last touchdown. Lifted up and set back. 24 seconds remain in the third quarter. The ball will be on the Michigan one-yard line. Second and goal for Minnesota. But it's doubtful that it will happen at this end of the field. It won't. Time runs out in the third quarter with the score. Michigan 30, Minnesota 7, but the Gophers are knocking on the door. The fans at the other end of Memorial Stadium getting a chance to see this possible touchdown on second and goal from the one. Minnesota lines up with one split receiver. Well out to the right, that's Kelvin Jackson. Salem goes to Marion Barber, who jumps into the arms of Andy Canavino, and they are short. Some of the Gophers disagree with the ball placement, but it is short, and it is third down, right on the goal line. The Michigan defense stiffening here after the fumble at the 20-yard line by Rich Hewlett. But two more cracks at it would seem that the Gophers can get six out of this. Third down. Barber again jumps up, touchdown. Not by much, but by enough. Marion Barber's seventh touchdown on the season and nothing real fancy. Uh, they're in a goal line defense. The offensive line just tries to stalemate him. Barber goes up over the top. Forward progress. Broke the plane of the goal line and that's for six points. Jim Gallery is the man. Boots it up. It's good. And make the score Michigan 30 and Minnesota 14. Carter and Edwards go deep for Michigan. Jim Gallery eyes the football. One of his few kickoffs this afternoon. Mostly it's been sheep since the start of the game. Carter over the shoulder at the goal line. 20-yard line. 30-yard line. Finally brought to a halt about the 34. Anthony Carter with about his season average per kickoff return. 34 yards. Anthony is averaging 100 and Anthony's averaging 124 yards a game in all-purpose yardage. Now here is just a great kickoff return. He almost breaks it if he can sneak by. That guy just gets a touch of his foot, knocks him down, but it gets him out 34 yards. I think Anthony's well over his average in all-purpose yardage of 124 today. Wangler is the quarterback again. Give to Stanley Edwards straight ahead, 35-yard line. The way Minnesota jumped in there, but there might have been a loose ball. But no. Minnesota going 20 yards after that fumble recovery in only six plays, and Marion Barber converted it into a touchdown. But we are in the fourth quarter now, 13 minutes and 36 seconds left in the game. Michigan leads by 16. Second down. Nine yards to go for a first down. Come back with Edwards. Trip. Knocked down and covered up pretty well.
Anthony Davis really got him around the ankles, first of all. Looked like Minnesota had that pretty well defensed anyway. That handoff deep in the backfield. And really, Minnesota had diagnosed it pretty easily. Third down and seven. Michigan comes out to set over the ball at their own 37-yard line. Wangler splits both his receivers. Normally, you would think pass. Whistles blow as he took too much time. A little check off by Wangler. Not sure, perhaps, of the way Minnesota's defense was going to react. And that'll be a five-yard penalty. Delay of game. Well, it wasn't, I don't think, how they were going to react because they'd already reacted. There were 11 men on the line of scrimmage is what it was. They were coming with everybody on the blitz, figuring Michigan would throw. So John was audibleizing at the line of scrimmage, trying to tell the tight end to stay in and block, and the two receivers where to go, and he just too, took too much time. Third down and 12. Now at the 30. Got a big throw again, but this time the Gophers drop their linebackers off as Wangler looks for Alan Mitchell. Did he make the catch? He did. At the 50-yard line, Alan Mitchell with a great comeback to the ball, and he caught it right off the top of the grass. Give Wangler credit for delivering the ball. He was delivered a shot when he threw it. Watch this. They're on a blitz from the outside. Boom. John's hit, but gets it out, and then Mitchell comes back. Yep, he caught it before it hit the ground. Nice reception. Good call by that official. On the Michigan side of the 50-yard line, first and 10. Gerald Ingram gets it near the Minnesota 46-yard line. A gain of four, second on and six. Just under 12 minutes left to play. Larry, that delay penalty earlier was the first penalty of this half, which is pretty clean played half. Chuck Christian comes in with a play from the sideline. Fred Brockington comes out. Kenny Gear splits out to the right. Number 39, and he is the only receiver. Split wide. Pitches to Edwards. Cuts back inside the blocking. Does not get very far. Maybe a yard back to the 45. Hit and roll to the ground by Jeff Shue. Down and four. Michigan ideally would keep this for the next 40 yards or so and take about eight minutes to do it in. And that would be a clincher for this football game. But now they have to convert on this third down. Wangler looking over the gopher defense. Wangler to throw. He lobs one for Gerald Ingram. Gerald's got it and got the first down at the 31 yard line of Minnesota. Dana Noel spun into the ground, but Ingram makes his first catch and a really simple one, too, on a pass just lobbed over the defenders. Good call in that Minnesota came with a blitz. They're coming with everybody, and they just can't cover a back out of the backfield. Ingram just runs flat out into the flat. Nobody there to cover. Brockington comes back, tries to get a block, but he can't get the deep man, and Ingram gets the big first down. 31-yard line, Minnesota, first and 10, Michigan. Straight ahead for Ingram. A little running room. He breaks clear. Gerald Ingram down to the five-yard line. Beautiful run by Gerald Ingram of 25 yards. Give That's me. just like the run that Wilfork broke for a touchdown. Absolutely. It's a counter trap up the middle. The guard center uh, switch block. And then he sees his way through. There's enough of a seal on the linebackers. Gives him lots of room, and he's into the secondary. At 6 2, 2 17, when he gets going, he's a load. He was an All-State high school player as a tailback, playing fullback for Michigan. Here he shows some of those tailback moves. First down, Edwards gets it and runs right straight into trouble. May have lost the yard. Edwards on the pitch. Ran smack into Dana Noel. And number 68, Rennie Capo. Thank you. 
Six-yard line, second and goal. Under 10 minutes to play. Split backs behind Wangler, Ingram, and Edwards. Edwards on the right side, cutting back inside, survives one hit, but there's too many gophers there that time. Rick Wittes bounced him one time, slowed him down, and the pursuit buried Edwards. Third down at the six. Michigan drives, stalling. Minnesota getting tough defensively here in the, uh, uh, down, or on, on the goal line. And you can see Stanley really running hard, but there's just too many people. Pursuit coming over to make the hit on him. Once again, the play not blocked that well. There are just too many people at the point of attack. Anthony Carter comes in and splits wide to the bottom of your screen, out left. Wangler to throw for Carter. Touchdown. Makes it look simple. Just ran straight back in for the post, and the defender couldn't stay with him. And Michigan adds six. Well, again, you know, we talk about it. You, you know, you cover him with one guy on the goal line, and forget it. Anthony just makes the simple post. Well, Angler's thrown this 100 times. Boom. Yeah, he's got two steps on him, and that's it. Touchdown. That puts Anthony all alone now in second place on Michigan's career touchdown reception list ahead of Tom Harmon. He's got 18 touchdown passes. He is in the middle of his sophomore year, as we mentioned. Haji Sheik to convert. That's good. And it's Michigan 37, Minnesota 14. Haji Sheik moving ahead to kick off. Artis and Watson are deep for Minnesota. Artis at the five. At the 25. Artis. Blasting through to the 33-yard line for Minnesota. Good punt return. 28 yards on the return. Minnesota was unable to move the football, so let's pick up action later in the quarter. There were 56,000 people here. The largest crowd in seven years for a Minnesota football game. And here's the guy that uh, everybody's talked about since he came out of Grand Black High School, Steve Smith. Quarterback for Michigan. We'll get to take our first look at him. 6'2", 195 pounder. And his handoff looked real good to uh, Gerald Ingram. You're cruel, Larry. You're very cruel. First play, Bo wants to let him get the feel of the game. And you say, first hand now, looks very good. You're a cruel man. I expected better from you. I really did, Larry. I read all his clippings. I expected <laughs> he'd run 50 yards for a touchdown. Well, I'll we'll run the option with okay. him. I'm interested to see how he does in this drive. Certainly, and so am I, Jim. I don't believe Second you. Second down and eight yards to go. Here he goes. Smith turns on a little speed and breaks it up before he's pushed out of bounds. 44-yard line. Gets outside quickly, gets a quick instruction from his coach, Steve Smith, and he heads back for the huddle. It'll be third down. Two yards for a first down. Chuck Christian comes in at tight end, and Norm Betts comes out. Six minutes, 43 seconds to play in the game. It's 37 to 14, Michigan in front. Steve Smith. Back to pass. Going to go nowhere. He is decked. Almost instantly. By Mike Robb. I knew I had that number somewhere. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. It's okay. Got to help out wherever I can. It's tough to run when you don't get any block. If you want me to defend him. I think he's a good little quarterback. They're expecting a lot from him. You're being mean. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. Don Bracken, the putter. <laughs> I'm not. He's going to kick it away on fourth down and eight for Michigan. That's into the wind. Just settles and points back. 35-yard line of Minnesota, where the catch is made by Glenn Cardelli. After a turnover, we pick up the action later in the quarter with Michigan in possession. Smith back to throw. 
And it is incomplete and almost intercepted. Intended for Dunaway, but the man getting on top of the ball was number 45, Mike Pepe. Second down and 10 for Michigan. Steve Smith getting a chance to do everything here. See if he can really guide this Michigan offense. He is the hope of the future. Draw play. Breaking through Stanley Edwards. He got about eight yards on that carry. Stanley Edwards forced to keep playing. It's a simple draw play, uh, much similar to the one that uh, Butch Wolfolk ran for a touchdown early. Michigan getting some good blocks in the interior line. Stanley probably would have had the first down had he been able to run through that uh, tackle at his ankle. But it puts him in good shape with a third and about half yard to go. And they go with Gerald Ingram, and he bangs it across the 40-yard line before he's hauled back by Fred Orgus. But that's a first down for Michigan. 2.20 left in the game. It's 37 to 14. Michigan leading Minnesota. And Michigan about to get its Big Ten season on track with the victory here today. Steve Smith, Gerald Ingram, Stanley Edwards in the eye. Smith keeping and throwing. Complete at the 28-yard line to Kenny Gear. Knocked down, rolled over by Ted Watson. That's a nice pass by Steve Smith. Nice yeah, it was. pass. Good uh, it shows a good, strong arm. Uh, this is what we have heard a lot about. He throws this ball about 30 yards in the air. Gear makes a nice cut, and he just holds on with a fingertip. First down. Minute 45 left to play. Ball on the Minnesota 28-yard line. Stanley Edwards diving into a pile down to about the 25. Here you are, Larry. Are you ready for this? I've wanted to do this all year long. Turn out the light. The party's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's about the first time Michigan has had a, a, a breather late in the game. They've been locked in close battles with everybody else this season. Brockington and Gear are the receivers, split left and right. For freshman quarterback Steve Smith, on a second down and eight, Ingram gets the call and works hard for four yards. 56 seconds to play. Gerald Ingram gets it closer to a first down. It is third and three. Middle of the field, about the 20-yard line, and there is the trophy that the Michigan players, Canavino particularly, is eyeing at this moment. The little brown jug. They all want to get a hand on it now. Ed Moransky, 72, is the man gutting it as Steve Smith rolls out to his left. Gets an opening and squeezes down the sideline for an extra yard or two. A first down. Stopping the clock with 24 seconds to go. There's little doubt that this is the fastest of the Michigan quarterbacks. He's about 4-5 in the 40, and I think he shows it here. He gets a good block there from Becker, and then Stanley Edwards comes out and gives him another three or four yards, and you can see he got good balance, too, as he was able to keep his feet and uh, tiptoe down the side. There's no option to that play at all. That's just a rollout. Turn around. Give to Ingram straight ahead. 20 seconds to go. And that may be all for Michigan. They can let this clock just run out if they choose. And the crowd waves at him, and a lot of the blue supporters are waving as Canavino is lifted with the precious brown jug in his hand. And there goes the gun to end this one. Michigan retains possession of the trophy by beating Minnesota 37 to 14. Be sure to join us next week as the Fighting Illini of Illinois travel to Ann Arbor to take on the Michigan Wolverines. Once again, the final score here today, Michigan 37, Minnesota 14. The executive producer of On TV Sports is Rocky Flinterman. Today's game was produced by Chuck Walzala, our assistant director.
from Michigan Stadium in...